Welcome to Supersize vs. Super Skinny. This week's feeding clinic residents are Supersize Fat and Sugar Junkie Danny and the food phobic who never finishes a meal, Super Skinny Vicky, in one of the most emotional swaps ever. It's disgusting. I don't know how she's going to manage, and that is really frightening. It makes me feel sick. They're checking in for a five-day stay at Dr. Christian Jessen's feeding clinic. Plus, our eating disorder sufferers face up to their low self-esteem with a visit to a spa. I don't like how I look. A bit embarrassed about them seeing my protruding bones. <laughs> The sizer is 29-year-old Danny Brooke from Lincolnshire. I absolutely love food. I love cooking food, I love eating food, I love shopping for food. I'm a bit of a foodaholic. <laughs> Danny has quite an obsession. I like cakes, I like biscuits, cakes, sweets, chocolate, cakes. There's so much variety. Why would you get bored of cake? This mum of two's appetite is well and truly supersized. My portion sizes are large. I will eat probably two platefuls for my dinner. And unfortunately, the portions have just got bigger. And I've just got bigger. Hmm. I need to make this change for myself because my health is going to start to change. I have young children. I want them to have their mum around for as long as I'm meant to be here. So, I need help. And Danny knows where to get it. She's checking into the feeding clinic where Dr Christian Jessen gives her a full medical to find out how her diet is affecting her health. At 24 stone 5, Danny is a frightening 15 stone overweight. At 5 foot 8, she should weigh between 9 and a half and 10 and a half stone. In my head, I'm Claudia Schiffer. I'm fit, I'm bubbly, I'm vivacious, I'm confident. Up here, I'm fine. Then I look down and it all goes wrong. You're obviously eating too much, which is why you're the size that you are, but how did that all start? I think a lot of it was, was sort of learned behaviour as a child and I was always told to kind of finish my plate and I guess as I've grown up my portions have just got bigger. So it's 29 years of habit in a way. Unfortunately. Do you use food to try and satisfy emotions? Yes I do. It's a very knowing smile. Yeah <laughs> unfortunately yeah I do use food. I use food when I'm happy, when I'm angry, when I'm sad. It's my constant companion. You have two young kids. How old are they? Three and a half and two. I mean please tell me they're not eating the same way that you are. No, not at all. I'm actually quite, not obsessive, but I'm, I'm quite certain that I, I give them as best a healthy diet as I can. Danny's not doing this just for herself. The health implications weigh on my mind. You know, I want her to enjoy the children now, to be able to run around and play with them, which she can't always do. She's the cement in our family that keeps everything together. Getting you to eat healthy and getting you to be a healthy weight and improve your diet will influence your kids and have as much effect on your kids as it will on you. You can't look after your kids because you get ill, because you have a heart attack, a stroke, diabetes. You're not going to be able to look after your kids at all. But Danny's not the only diet disaster checking into the feeding clinic. It's time to meet her fellow diet swapper, super skinny 21-year-old Vicky Smith from Glasgow. If I'm angry, anxious, upset, worried, any sort of thing like that, where I'm just generally not happy, I don't have an appetite at all. Vicky is a security guard with irregular shifts, and this has left her with irregular eating habits. I tend to leave a large portion of my meals because of the times I finish work, it's quite late at night when I'm eating. But when Vicky is eating, it's not exactly a varied, balanced diet. I eat toasties near enough every day. Cheese, ham, tomato, cut it into four like a child. I always, always leave the crust. I'm 21 now and want to start a family, so I need to have a healthy relationship with food from starting from now and for the rest of my life, I need to get it fixed. 
and the man to fix it for Vicky is Dr. Christian. Five foot three Vicky should weigh between eight and nine stone, but at a tiny six stone four, she's two stone underweight. When I look in the mirror, I would see skin and bone, hate let my hips stick out, no boobs, no bum, really, really skinny arms. I just don't feel like a woman, I just feel like a wee girl. How has this happened? What are your eating habits like? I think it started since I got my braces in. I think that's a big part in it. Um, I start, my eating habits changed and started taking the crusts off food. And because eating was difficult with braces? Well. Yes, and okay. when I just got the braces in, I was like, on soup and ice cream and that, things like that for weeks because that's all I could manage. So you sort of taught yourself how to eat yeah. small amounts of food at that stage. But then how does it make you feel, energy levels and that sort of thing? Does it I've, affect that? I've not got much energy at all. And I'm always really, really tired and I don't like to go out much or anything like that because I can't find anything to wear. So it really is affecting my life in a big way. But Vicky's limited diet could be limiting her chances of becoming a mum. I've had two ectopic pregnancies, um, which is really unfortunate for me and Chris, who's really, really upsetting. And I had to get an operation to remove one of my fallopian tubes. And the one remaining is badly scarred, so we were then told that I would have to go for IVF, which I'm currently on the waiting list for and really looking forward to. So it'd be good to have the wait on for that as well. She's lost a wee bit of confidence in herself. If she feels happier with putting on weight, then I'm happy, totally happy with that. We need to get you eating properly in a healthy body weight if you want to have good chances of the IVF working and if you're going to carry a healthy baby and bring up a healthy baby, aren't you? I definitely don't want any of my bad habits going on to my children. I, would, I couldn't cope with that, so I need to deal with it now. Danny and Vicky's appetites are poles apart, but before finding out how different their diets are, it's time Super Size met Super Skinny. I'm Danny. Lovely to meet you. How much do you weigh? Six stone four. Then I probably weighed your size when I was ten. My goodness, she is tiny. <laughs> I think the top of my arm is about the size of her thigh. So, yeah, there's a bit of a difference there. I was pretty shocked. The size difference between me and Danny is absolutely ridiculous. To make Danny eat less and Vicky eat more, they're going to be swapping diets for the next five days. But first, they need to know what's on the menu this week. Vicky, we're going to start with you, so let's start with your breakfast, OK? Wow, that looks like a yummy breakfast. What's that? Toasty. Let's have a look. What else? Oh, look. You really like toasties, don't you? Is that all you have for breakfast? Yeah. Let's have a look. What else is there to come? Oh, hallelujah, something slightly different. Looks like a bit of black pudding and a bit of egg. So lunch is going to be... More exciting, more varied, more flavourful. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, nor do I. Oh, look, what a surprise. More toasties. <laughs> You're going to grow to love toasties yeah. by the end of this. Is eating a pleasure for you? Not right now, no. It's not. OK, finally, dinner time. Do you really eat all of that? Two whole Yorkshire puddings? Yeah, I enjoy stuff like that a lot more. So if you enjoy that, why isn't this sort of thing more part of your diet than those relentless toasties? Because they're not fitting into my lifestyle and I, I don't know how to fit it into my lifestyle and that's something I need to try and do. All right, let's see some more. And that looks like a bit of chicken curry and rice. Do you eat the whole lot? No, I usually leave half. You're an adult woman in a busy job and that's your week's worth of food, three meals a day. Are you shocked by that? I'm really, really shocked. Mm -hmm. And so she should be. The amount recommended for an adult is 2,000 calories a day, but she's taking on just 1,500. That's what doctors advise for a four-year-old. Without supplementation, you're at risk of having a problematic pregnancy. OK, so this is vital. We stop this now. Yes? Agreed? Definitely. OK, Danny, it's your turn now. Oh, a bit of cake. That's a nice breakfasty thing, isn't it? I was hungry and it was there, so I didn't think about anything else. I just OK, that's there. a very good, honest answer, actually. Yeah. And I suspect that will be the answer to a lot of this. Yeah, probably. Let's have a look at what else there is. And what are you spreading on your toast here? Chocolate spread? Um, chocolate spread or peanut butter. Let's see what else there is. 
Delicious, yogurt, it's okay, that's a normal breakfast thing. I'll let you have that. There we go, lunches. Lemon meringue pie and a load of chocolate cookies. Yeah. Next. Oh, look, Mum's homemade cake. Wow, and some really big quarter pounders, two of them. What are your dinners like? Mostly homemade, if I'm honest. Curry. Yep, and good old burgers back in there again. Pizza, plus chips. Yeah, chilli. Two pasties there and two muffins. So you snack a little bit during the day as well? Mm-hmm. More cake and more cake and more cake. There were quite a lot more snacks to come, weren't there? Danny's gorging on 3,800 calories a day. She's eating enough for almost two women. You're a sugar and fat junkie. Yeah. Is the bottom line, isn't it? Because up here, you think they make you feel better. What we have to do is get you liking yourself a little bit more. We can make you feel happier, but we can do it in different ways, healthier ways. I couldn't believe the quantity of food. No vegetables, no fruit, just rubbish. I was horrified, absolutely horrified. When I seen all the food going down Danny's tubes, it's everything that I don't like. Cakes, I hate cakes, pastries, disgusting. Chocolate spreads and that for breakfast, that's sickly. For somebody of her size to be faced with the amount of food that I eat in one sitting, I don't know how she's going to manage. And that is really frightening. This week's feeding clinic residents are cake addict Danny and four times lighter super skinny Vicky, who never finishes a meal. They've swapped diets to help Danny realise she can eat less and to push Vicky to eat bigger portions and more varied meals. Tonight's the first meal of the swap, and for Vicky, there's two supersized portions of homemade pork curry rice, salad, and naan bread washed down with diet cola. Danny's dinner is a chicken tikka ready meal and a glass of full sugar fizzy pop. I mean, this is a normal sized portion for, for most people, so I'll be absolutely fine with this. You might not be fine, Danny, when you realize that Vicky has a habit of never finishing a meal. Normally, I would. I would leave half of that, so I hope that's <laughs> setting <laughs> okay. It's not so normal portion after all, but no. fair enough. Okay. You're gonna struggle to get through the first plate. Never okay. mind the well, second. I guess just try what you can do. I think eating's like become my second job. <laughs> it's like a task now. <laughs> As Danny stops, Vicky's still got another plateful to go. In this one meal, she's facing as much as she'd normally eat in a couple of days. I think that's me out. You think you're finished, but you've actually got pudding too. Pudding is a bowl of chocolate-covered peanut sweets. I wish I could share them with you. <laughs> I'm feeling really full and quite sick looking at it. If somebody is struggling to gain weight, eating half a portion isn't the way forward. My goal by the end of the week is to finish one of our meals, maybe two. <laughs> As day two dawns, Danny and Vicky are already feeling the effects of swapping diets. Normally at home, if I was feeling hungry, I would just go to the fridge, get something out, but because I can't do that here, I'm having to sort of get used to the feeling of hunger. I know there's going to be a lot of cakes and toast and that involved this morning, which isn't my favourite, so that should be interesting to see how that goes for me. You're right, Vicky, there is more cake. Breakfast today is three slices of it and a yoghurt. While Danny will be having a cheese and ham toasty. Is it a whole one? No, I'm afraid not. Oh. This morning I would probably only have half of that with no crust either. OK. <laughs> My goodness, that is sweet. And this is really sweet. <laughs> yeah, but it's a different sort of sweetness. It makes me feel sick. You're struggling, aren't you? I could never ever eat cake for breakfast. And not. Seeing Vicky struggle with what she'd normally eat without thinking is an eye-opener for Danny. Sorry. It just hits home that it clearly isn't normal. It's like the most disgusting breakfast I've ever had in my life. Well, it's about to get worse. After breakfast, the girls take a walk in the woods, but for supersized Danny, this isn't a simple stroll. Something that I do sometimes is I take myself away somewhere quiet, usually when I'm walking my dog, 
and I will eat something when no one else can see me doing it, basically. <sighs> Danny's secret snack is a family-sized tube of crisps and a bag of mini chocolate bars. Tell me how all this sort of thing started. I've done this for years, years and years and years. And your mum and that had no idea? Not really, no. Why is it that you hide it from them? Because I'm embarrassed, I guess. Whether it's, you know, filling some sort of void in me, I don't know, but the feeling of taste and then having a full stomach afterwards makes me... Happy. ..calmer, <laughs> comforted. The secret eating's definitely going to be your biggest battle. What you really need to remember and just keep telling yourself, this is food that's supposed to be shared. Yeah, that's really good advice, actually. I think that was really hard for Danny to open up today, and I'm glad she did. Hopefully, when everybody else finds out, it'll really hit home what she's doing. And she really has just got to be tough with herself and stop. Both Danny and Vicky in our feeding clinic have issues with food, but they're not alone. Over the series, we're following three women with different eating disorders on a course designed to help them develop a healthier relationship with food and their bodies. Overseen by Dr. Helena Fox and led by dietitian Ursula Philpot. 32-year-old Mina Krishnan suffers with bulimia, 34-year-old Emma Paul with anorexia, and 19-year-old Erin Ruddick has anorexia with a binge purge subtype. Last week, Ursula encouraged them to confront their low self-esteem and negative body image by taking them clothes shopping. You need some jewellery around your neck, I think. I need a great big jumper. <laughs> Emma struggled with how she looked, and the day brings bigger issues to the surface for Erin. I just think it's made me realise how bad I really am. Mm. And I think I've been in complete denial about the extent. Late that evening, Erin takes a turn for the worse and is taken to hospital. I had my dinner, but afterwards I just kept eating and didn't stop when I got to the hotel room. I like, had quite a bit of a binge. I felt quite weak. My hands turned blue and spasmed a bit. I felt kind of outside of myself. Earlier in the series, Erin fainted due to her potassium levels dropping too low. Potassium is essential for heart, muscular and digestive function. Regular binging and purging causes potassium levels to drop very low, and this can lead to feelings of weakness, cramping in the muscles and fainting. My potassium levels were dangerous, so they decided to keep me in overnight. This may seem like a major setback for Erin, but during their recovery, eating disorder sufferers can often get worse before they get better. Moving away from the focus on bodily symptoms onto psychological symptoms can actually feel very distressing, but it can in fact be a healthy way forward. It heralds an awareness of what the emotional trigger is and perhaps the beginning of an ability to be able to talk about it rather than take it out on one's body. For the next few days, Erin's physical and mental condition is monitored, and it's decided she's too unwell to travel down to London for the remainder of the course. Erin appeared to be coping really well with the sessions. However, as time went on, I began to realise, as did Erin, that she was a lot more unwell than she wanted to admit. Facing up to the realities of an eating disorder is a really important step on the road to recovery. She'll now be able to go on and get the more intensive support that she needs. Today, Mina and Emma are meeting up with dietitian Ursula to address the low self-esteem that people with eating disorders often suffer from. This week, I'd like Emma and Mina to try and reconnect with their bodies and enjoy the pleasure they can get from treating themselves. So I've invited them here to enjoy a day of relaxation at the spa. People with eating disorders often punish their bodies, so a visit to a spa is seen as a luxury which they don't consider they deserve. It's something I haven't done. So don't pamper myself, so it's going to be quite a treat. But also nervous. I don't fancy having to strip off <laughs> and for people to see me. A visit to the spa might be particularly challenging for sufferers of eating disorders. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. They're not used to experiencing their bodies as instruments of pleasure. Uh, they will be very anxious about revealing their bodies, about being touched, 
and they're worrying about their shape and their weight and their appearance. I don't like how I look. A bit shy and embarrassed about them seeing my protruding bones. <laughs> how does it feel? It's feeling very nice. For Mina, with bulimia, a visit to the spa is also a new experience and the kind of treat she'd never normally allow herself to have. I don't know that I feel that like I don't deserve to do something nice for my body. It's more that I just don't see the need or the point. When people say, don't you treat yourself by having some chocolate, to me that's not a treat, but doing something like this is a bit of a treat. And for another thing, it's something I never ever do, so it's a bit interesting. Both Mina and Emma are managing to overcome their anxiety about pampering their bodies. Hello. Hello. I enjoyed today. The treatments was lovely. The lady did it very nicely and she was very friendly and she made me feel comfortable and relaxed. Emma is somebody who punishes her body and is quite ashamed of her body. So today was really quite a breakthrough for her. She was able to relax, um, she was able to treat herself and she was able to tolerate doing that. How does it feel, Emma? It's soft and now I'm wrapped up in plastic. <laughs> I thought today was pretty good fun. It's not the sort of thing I usually do and I was a bit embarrassed quite a lot of the time, but it was really nice seeing Emma enjoying herself so much. Being in the spa most of the day has meant that Mina has been quite distracted from thoughts about binging um, and purging, so that's been a good thing. I do agree that it's good to treat yourself with something that's not related to food or exercise. Emma and Mina join Ursula for lunch to discuss their progress so far and the impact that Erin being hospitalised and leaving the group has had on them. I definitely miss having her here. It shows that she's been playing quite a significant role in the group mm. because I've certainly noticed, noticed her absence. Her, yeah. yeah. Yes. I hope Erin realises quite how ill she is. It was a bit of a wake-up call for her. I just hope that actually translates into action rather than just carrying on as before. After seven weeks, Emma's had a major breakthrough. To help cope with her eating disorder, she'd given it a name, Ed. But she now realises she needs to silence this inner critic and confront her true emotions. Not labelling it as the two different sections, sections. now. It's me got to own up to it and accept mm. it and mm. take That's these things on board. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. As of I yesterday, I um, made a promise mm. that I was not going to say Ed thinks this or feels Anymore. this. Mm. So, he, yeah, that word is, not, is no longer going to be said. Erin not being here has been quite a wake-up call for Emma. She's realised how entrenched her eating disorder is, how ill she is, and also what she needs to do to get better. She's decided this week that she's no longer going to use Ed as her alter ego. She's actually going to incorporate that part back into Emma and express negative emotions as Emma. I think both girls got a lot out of today. Both were able to relax and to sort of reflect on leisure as an activity, uh, not just something that's a rare treat. Next week, Emma and Mina meet Ursula for the final time to reflect on their progress over the past eight weeks of the course. The first time I was with you, you ate nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing. So yeah, two months ago, I would have just given up on this because it's gone cold. If you've been affected by any of the issues raised in the show, go to our website channel4.com forward slash supersize v super skinny. Back in the feeding clinic, our diet swappers are looking back over some photos to try and pinpoint where their issues with food began. This one, I was about five and we moved to Texas. Yeah. I think I was about 12 in that picture. That's a lot of weight you've put on. Yeah. I was probably about 15 in that picture, so we'd only just moved back. I remember that skirt was a size 18, so, yeah, I was a big girl even then. At what point through this did you start your secret eating? If I'm honest, it was somewhere between there and there. That young? Yeah. It's followed you all your life, then, yeah, basically? Yeah, basically, yeah. That's obviously my daughter, Katie. Hadn't really lost the baby weight then. Two years ago, that was myself with Christopher. I was probably... My absolute biggest there. It seems like since you've met your husband and you've had the kid, you've totally ignored your weight. I can't just spread myself 
thinner and thinner and looked after them so much more that I didn't really care about myself because I guess I wasn't that important in my head. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Now it's Vicky's turn to look back over her life. This is around seven or eight, and as you can tell, I'm obviously enjoying my food because it's all down my jumper. <laughs> this is me at about 11 years old. I ate a lot then and never seemed to gain any weight. This, when I was 16, I was a size eight there, and I was maybe getting a bit bigger. Did you leave portions then? Never, and I would snack and I'd eat whatever I wanted. Um, this is round about 18, my little sister here. Started working in security by this point. Right. So I was dealing with the funny shifts and my whole eating habits had changed. My 21st there, I was actually pregnant at the time, but I didn't know. Were you happy? Yeah, I was really happy. Huh? And this was, unfortunately, it took into hospital for an ectopic pregnancy. After I came out of hospital, that's... I think that, oh, that's something that I've just noticed now. A lot of the weight came off, I wasn't eating as much and just feeling really depressed. You shouldn't blame yourself for being like this because people go through things differently. Yeah. You know, I go through emotional turmoil and, and stuff a cake in my mouth. You go through emotional turmoil and steer away from food as much as you can. Yeah. When I'm feeling down and upset, I definitely need to try and talk to people a bit more and I not just cut out food completely and think about food and that I do actually need to eat instead of thinking that I'm fine without it. Coming up, Danny sees how her future could be if she continues overeating. Danny, you must make your health the most important priority. And Vicky gets a reality check about her super skinny diet. I don't want to end up like that. It's day four in the feeding clinic for super-sized cakeaholic Danny and super-skinny Vicky, who never finishes a meal. Vicky's been struggling with Danny's sugar and fat-laden diet, and this morning's breakfast is more of the same, toast with peanut butter and cake to follow, while Danny's having what looks like a fry-up. Feeling about half a pork burger, half a black pudding, and half the potato scone, and the yolk of the egg, I wouldn't eat the weight. To be honest, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not really thinking about my meal. I'm absolutely, completely gobsmacked about the amount of food that you have faced with. And more cake. And seeing it like that is sickening, actually. Yeah, that's how I feel looking at it. <sighs> OK, we better get started. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure about black pudding. Just depends what kind of black pudding you get. You notice I'm not even thinking about the crass at all. That's absolutely brilliant, really good. Well, there's a little bit of progress there from Vicky, but it's not so easy for Danny. It's just really difficult, seeing this. It's actually probably the most difficult thing. I'm just so appalled at myself, ashamed. I'm really sorry I've had to put you through that. Yeah. Done really well, actually. Danny is finally coming to terms with her out of control eating habits, and Dr. Christian wants to reinforce this realization with a personal message from America. My name is Angel Austin. I'm from Austin, Texas. I'm 36 years old, and I weigh 36 stone. Getting into the size that I am now is probably be attributed to poor eating habits. I've been ridiculed, you know, because of being obese. People can be really cruel. And the one thing that made me feel better was eating. I would go and hide and eat. And that's what I've always done. I have a chair that I roll around the house because it's to use wherever I can't stand. It's a lot of the cleaning, the mopping of the floors. My husband, I have to depend on him to do that. It makes me feel like an inadequate wife. Because I'm super morbidly obese, it's very difficult to maintain cleanliness. I can't really clean all the way through thoroughly. I tend to sweat more because I have a lot of skin folds and bacteria tends to go under there no matter how much I wash. And so I tend to itch 
and have a smell so I have to use antifungal creams under my belly under my breast behind my knees sometimes even under my arms I became pregnant in 2000 and ended up losing the baby at five months the doctor attributed to my obesity I felt like essentially I killed my child because I was out of control. I'm most afraid of not waking up, of leaving my husband a widower, of devastating my family. Danny, the most important thing I can tell you is that you must make your health, your life, your quality of life the most important priority. Because if you don't do that now, you won't be alive to enjoy your kids or your husband. It's not a bad thing to love who you are and make better choices for you. All right. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm shocked and a bit scared. No disrespect to her, but I don't want to end up like that. Doesn't want you to end up like her either. So. No. What scared you? I've seen snippets of her life that have started already to creep into my own. Like being uncomfortable in your own skin, in your own clothes. Obviously, if I get bigger, it's just going to get worse and worse. There was that whole, when I'm unhappy, I secretly eat, she said right at the beginning, <laughs> which I thought, uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I found myself nodding in agreement. I guess I'm glad that I'm facing up to that now, and I'm hoping that it won't, you know, continue on and that I won't find myself in her position in the future. OK, well, I'm quite glad you said that. Yeah. Because I've got something else to tell you. OK. And that is that I'm going to be flying you out back to Texas to go and meet her. Oh, my gosh. So that you damn well make sure that you don't let her down in the future. <laughs> All right? OK. <laughs> yes. OK, yeah, I, I will take that challenge. I haven't been back to Texas for a while and going back there is going to probably bring back a lot of old memories, seeing the struggles that she goes through and having it in the environment where, you know, I went through similar problems as a kid. It's going to be difficult, I think, emotional. After that shock, it's back to the diet swap for Danny and just time to prepare a mid-morning snack for super skinny Vicky of a ham roll and more cake. If I'm honest, I'm a bit gutted that I'm doing it because it feels like a form of torture for Vicky upstairs. I've got a bit of a snack for you. Mm. My sort of mid-morning elevenses. OK. More cakes. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I don't snack between meals. I think the mid-morning snack seems to be like an invention of Danny's or maybe of oversized people, but I've never ever heard of a mid-morning snack. Half a roll's quite enough after what I've already ate. I feel really full. Vicky would like to have a baby in the future, so her repetitive diet and her tendency to never finish a meal really needs to change. For the rest of the swap, I want her to focus on increasing her portion size because that will help her put on some weight and then make a pregnancy much more likely. To reinforce this to Vicky, Dr. Christian has created a special gallery to highlight the potential dangers of her super skinny diet. So this first picture here, well, you talk me through it. What do you see? This is pigmentation in the skin, which I think I've already got. I've got like a circle on my cheek, which is white. It's called vitiligo. And it's a condition where basically your body attacks its own melanin producing cells. And so you start to lose these areas. Vitiligo can be caused by a lack of iodine, which Vicky's limited diet has left her deficient in. This could also put her at risk of developing thyroid problems. To increase her iodine, she needs to be eating seafood, root vegetables and dairy food. Often where the pigment producing cells have been completely destroyed, it doesn't come back again. You look a bit horrified. I'm not horrified, I really am. It's, I don't want to end up like that. So the next one here, this is something called a stoma. If you have a bowel condition that's so bad, it means we have to remove a portion of your bowel. Sometimes we can't just stitch you all back up again and things work. 
we have to bring the end of the bowel that's still there out through your abdominal wall. And that's essentially where you pass your feces through. This is a life-saving operation, but in many cases it's avoidable. So something as significant as just getting enough fibre in your diet, eating more roughage, can prevent something like that. It's pretty full on, isn't it? Yep, definitely. Okay, so come and have a look at this one. What is going on there? The nail's very flat. Have a look at your nails. What shape are they? They're rounded. So this is something called coilonychia, or spoon-shaped nails, and it is a result of having iron deficiency. My toenails. I've got a couple like that. OK, so there's already possibly a couple of signs that things might be not so great. The other thing is you want to get pregnant, and so your iron requirements are going to suddenly dramatically increase if you do get pregnant, which I hope you do, and therefore it's vital that you've got enough on board to help a baby develop properly as well. I'm really, really shocked. I didn't think that I could ever be doing that much damage to myself, so I really need to go home and readdress and put all the things into my diet that I should be having. This has been quite a shock for Vicky and something of a wake-up call. It's the final evening in the feeding clinic, but there's the small matter of making dinner, as Vicky will be having one of Danny's homemade pizzas. Kind of the size of your dinner plate, not my dinner plate. <laughs> And my favourite fillings are mushroom peppers. And I really like pepperoni. A bit more cheese first. You kind of fold it over and make sure that you've kind of sealed it up. Looks good. That was easy, wasn't it? Yeah. Danny's dinner will be a spaghetti bolognese ready meal with one piece of garlic bread. You've just put a whole loaf of garlic bread back in the oven. Yep, because my boyfriend would eat the rest of that and I usually only have one or a couple of slices. Well, Danny doesn't share her pizza, so Vicky will be having the whole thing, along with half a plate of oven chips and a bowl of ice cream for Pud. For the first time this week, Danny's allowed to eat the whole meal, although it's still a small portion. I think at this point, it would be the only time I would encourage you to leave the crust. I tend to leave the crust sometimes. OK. Over dinner, Vicky has a realisation about how the diet swap has changed her. I definitely will be finishing my meals and need to learn how to snack more than just... Definitely, I think the both of us need to eat a lot more fruit and veg, which is something that we don't do. And one of the things that you said to me that really, really has hit home about my secret eating and the choices of food that I do eat at the times that I do that is that it's meant to be shared. And that is really important. Yeah. Really important. And I thank you for that. Hopefully it's going to help when you get home. Mm. I'm done. You've eaten most of the, the good bit anyway. I mean, if you don't eat chips, you don't eat chips, no big deal. But. I've had all the inside. <laughs> it's really nice. Thanks very much. As Danny and Vicky reach the end of their stay in the feeding clinic, they'll be heading home with individual healthy eating plans. The new me is somebody who isn't constantly preoccupied with food. I'm going to use food to nourish myself but not to be my friend. I'm just going to have a lot healthier relationship with food. Take care. Yep, definitely. Good luck with everything. Yes. See you later. I've definitely got a different attitude towards food and I appreciate it a lot more after what I've been given this week. So I'm looking forward to just finishing meals and definitely won't be leaving any crust anymore. America is one of the fattest nations on earth, and we're not far behind. British women are now top of the European Fat League and getting bigger. A short time after leaving the feeding clinic, we've flown Danny to Austin, Texas, where she used to live as a child. When I was in Texas before, obviously I had you know, trouble with eating and portions and just being back, seeing all the different restaurants that we used to go to, just remembering how we used to revolve around food so much. Dr Christian wants the trip to make Danny change her diet for good. I'm a bit apprehensive about meeting Angel. I'm a big woman, but she's obviously quite a bit bigger than myself, but the fact that we've already got stuff in common is, is scary. At her heaviest, Angel weighed 40 stone, but after undergoing weight loss surgery, she now weighs 34 stone. 
Hi, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Edward. She gives Danny an insight into how her weight and recent stomach reduction operation have impacted on her life. Okay, Danny, come on in and have a seat. The first thing I do, because I have hypertension, mm -hmm. is take heart pills. But because I can't swallow them, I have to grind them. I take the cup and I pour the powder in the cup, but I can't just douse it because it's too bitter. I take the B12 drops, and I take two drops every day, and here it goes. Mm. Oh, God. You can't eat um, until you wait it 15 to 30 minutes after you drink. You can't eat and drink at the same time. Okay, we're gonna have a bite to eat. Being morbidly obese has severely restricted Angel's mobility, and she wants Danny to see how this affects daily life. As you see, I'm in the kitchen, I'm about to eat, and I'm sitting in a chair. Yeah. Because it's difficult for me to stand. It hurts my knees to get up and down, it hurts my back, so I have to ask for help from my husband. I'm gonna ask you to actually make our lunch for us. Okay. okay. Angel is now following a strictly controlled diet plan and shows Danny how difficult meal times yeah, are. The long one. Yes, yeah, so kind of roll over. Can you reach it? Uh, okay, just just about. Yes. I take for granted just kind of twirling, twirling around my kitchen and getting stuff out of cupboards and, and not really thinking about it. And she has to really make a conscious effort just to you know get salt out of the cupboard. Danny wants to find out from Angel how she got to the stage she's at now. I was an only child up until the time I was about 11. So I went to school and came home and I was alone to pass the time I would eat. My parents usually didn't know, you know, because I'd eat when I first got home from school. So whenever they get home and my mom would cook, I'd eat again. I had a very similar thing. I used to eat just to keep myself company more mm -hmm. than anything else. If I were to give you any kind of advice, I would tell you that the deliciousness, the satisfaction, the gratification, it's not worth it. Thank you so much. Meeting Angel today has been really emotional, but very, very beneficial. Really helps me see um, that I need to change um, now. Following Danny's visit, Angel has continued to lose weight, and since her surgery has lost a total of three stone 11 pounds. Her mobility and health are improving every day. For Danny, the challenge is to stop overeating before she ends up like Angel. So has the trip to America made a difference? Shortly after returning home, Danny's back to catch up with Vicky and see how they've got on with their diet plans. So Vicky, tell me how things have been going. Things have been going really well with my diet. I'm fitting in a lot more things and trying new things. I'm going really well. My food habits are all gone now. You wouldn't see a crust in sight. What really turned things around and made you realise that what you were doing was pretty bonkers? When I seen the pictures that you showed me, that was the real eye-opener for me. I didn't want to give myself any serious health problems, so I started to take things a lot more seriously. Tell me, what are the sort of major differences between Vicky now as opposed to Vicky then? I've got loads more energy and I'm just a lot more confident with food and I'm willing to try more things than before. Next in to see Dr Christian, is Danny. Danny, tell me what sort of changes you've managed to make then. I now probably eat half of what I used to eat, but I still cook, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely eating a lot healthier. Well, I know you did protect your kids a bit from your eating habits because of the whole secret eating issue. <laughs> yeah. Are you still doing that? It, no, I'm not secret eating anymore. It's a completely ridiculous notion, quite frankly, and I'm glad that I'm not doing it anymore because there's no need. It's unnecessary. Before Dr. Christian reveals their final results, Danny and Vicky are reunited. Hello, how are you? You wonderful. You? So do you. I can see a big difference already. Can you? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Excuse me for interrupting you, but I know you're desperate, desperate, desperate to know how you've been doing, don't you? Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say, so let's have a talk about weight. Your weight gain currently, today, is four pounds. It's not the world's biggest amount, but it's not nothing either. It means that whatever it is that you've been doing is working and you are gaining weight. Brilliant. I'm happy. So what about you, madam? Oh, I hope you're going to put me out of my misery. <laughs> you have lost? If I've lost a stone, I'll be ecstatic. 
You've lost more than a stone. You've lost one stone three pounds. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, so really gosh. good. Double that to six months, double it to a year. We're talking four or five stone you're going to be losing. I am absolutely chuffed with my result. I wanted a stone and the fact that I've got more than that is just great and it sends me in good stead for the next journey. It's been the best thing I've ever done. I'm really happy with the results and all I can do is improve on it and I'm looking forward to the rest of the year and hopefully getting that stone on.